Hello and welcome back to another video from Aiden's Workshop. Today I'm showing you my wooden pendulum clock. This pendulum mechanism is based off of Galileo's escapement, but the design of the clock is original. I built this back in 2020 and I cut all of the gears myself, which I'll show you later. This clock works in a similar way to how grandfather pendulum clocks work. There's a hanging mass that provides energy to the system by falling down a distance. This fall is slowed down by the periodic motion of the pendulum, which only allows it to fall at a set rate. In this escapement mechanism, there's a spool on the bottom gear that holds the hanging mass, which is a can of pebbles. Then there are two gear ratios of 4 to 1 that turn the top ratchet wheel. These gear ratios allow the mass to fall only a little bit for every turn of the ratchet wheel. There is an arm on the top that engages with the ratchet wheel to prevent it from spinning clockwise, which would drop the mass to the floor. The pendulum lifts this arm up, allowing the ratchet wheel to spin. Once the arm is lifted up, a peg on the ratchet wheel pushes the pendulum back in the other direction. It's at this point that the hanging mass can transfer its potential energy to the pendulum to keep it swinging. The period of the pendulum is dependent on the length of the pendulum, not the mass at the bottom. In this case, the period is about 0.83 seconds. Since the period of the pendulum is constant, you could use this clock as a timer. You just have to attach a hand to the bottom gear and draw some tick marks. I just built this clock as a proof of concept, so I never did that. The length of time that this clock runs is dependent on the distance from the table to the floor that the hanging mass can fall. This clock can last about four minutes and you are listening to the entire length of time now. As I mentioned earlier, I cut all of the gears myself. First I glued a paper template onto a piece of plywood. Then I used a drill press to make holes between all the teeth. Next I would cut all the teeth using a scroll saw. Here's what the individual pieces looked like. There were many difficulties with this process. First, the center hole had to be drilled perfectly, and so it was the first thing I would do. If the center hole was off even a millimeter, I would restart the gear, which I did many times. Another problem was getting the diameter of the center hole perfect, since the gears on the top two axles move with the axles, and the bottom gear and spool move freely on the axle. To adjust the diameter, I put sandpaper on a rod in my drill, and I would just slightly sand it until the gear could spin but not wobble. I also had to do some fine sanding of the teeth with a file and an emery board, but in the end, all the teeth fit together nicely. All of the wood in this clock is craft plywood. The pendulum shaft and gear axles are aluminum rods, and the ratchet wheel pegs are brass rods. The pendulum mass is a big stainless steel nut that I drilled a hole into and all of the gears were lubricated with graphite powder. There was actually a previous version of the clock that didn't work since the gears would bind up. After this I redesigned it and cut the gears more precisely. The second version of the clock, which is what you're seeing now, still works great four years later. In the future I might build a full-size grandfather clock, which could last for 24 hours, but you'll have to stay tuned. As usual, Thank you for watching, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.